Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 Cross the Dnieper here today on the channel. We're back with episode 3 of our series. We're currently under the reign of President Vladimir Zelensky. It is July 2019. We're still making plans and preparations to deal with the oncoming storm. We currently have three rebellious oblasts that we have to keep an eye on. Uh, Boris Johnson has just become Prime Minister and we nearly have 150 divisions on the border. Unfortunately in this alternative timeline not only did Donetsk, Luhansk and okay that's an interesting development there <laughs> uh, rebel that the oblast of Kharkiv has fallen as well so we won't have the Battle of Sumi in this series. They're going to be even further in our territory. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can hold on and survive. So we're currently just trying to remodernize and sort of westernize our army where we can. Is there anything we can go down here? Maybe we go with like early warning systems. We're slowly but surely building up our military logistics and materiel. We have 600k manpower-ish. We're growing our doctrine as well. We spent some time, pre some time previously focusing on purchasing as much NATO arms as we can. We've also done training exercises. We're focusing on artillery, anti-air. Navy-wise, we have a pretty decent size submarine force so hopefully once the war kicks off we're going to be at a convoy raid and maybe try and destroy the black sea fleet and basically make crimea untenable for them but we'll see but so far just trying to build up as much as we can now it's been quite some time since we've had any sort of conflicts on this border four years or so. So I'll set up some front lines just in case, but unless we somehow get an opportunity to try and reincorporate these oblasts back into our territory, we'll see. I'd like to, but I don't know if we're going to be able to. Alright, so looking down the events and decisions, anything else we can do here now? Still preparing those border skirmishes. We can't purchase F-16s just yet. We do have a small amount of close air support, which we'd like to continue. But at the moment... Oh, we also <laughs> annexed Transnistria, <laughs> which is quite funny. So night attack now. Nice. Going to try and get those thermal scopes attached, especially on the flat terrain of Ukraine. That's going to be massive for us. I mean, there's not much coverage. Okay, we can't upgrade our chassis. I could take the advanced three artillery. Because if we can sort of try and match with them, we actually might even be able to make our own high mobility artillery as well. Because at the moment, we're still very much producing everything in-house. We have 43% of our logistics requirement. Oh no. So that's now reached Europe as it's January 2020 now. So basically from here on now, the war can kick off any time. I think I want to go with that actually. Okay, we're slowly but surely moving more military forces that have been recruited in Kiev, put them to the border. And we might need to auto drop a bunch of them. What's our main issue? So we've got a bunch of infantry equipment, rocket artillery, artillery, anti-air, we're good. The anti-air, anti-tank could be better. But once we start getting NATO and uh, Western equipment and material, that should change things. But we want to try and produce as much of our in-house stuff as we can. Okay, so... He still very much controls the Rada, which is good. Now, thankfully, there doesn't seem to be too many 
units on this Kharkiv border. Closer towards the DPR. Seems to be a lot worse. Now, will they be able to move from Belarus territory? You'd think so, but they... I don't know if there's a game limitation in that. And we still can't get those chassis yet. So we only got the T-90s. Uh, let's go with a small frame there. Advanced artillery upgrade. Maybe go with rocket artillery improvements. Okay. Military factories wise, we're sitting at 53. We can get advanced artillery now. Weapons 3 is probably not a bad idea. You just gotta calculate. Sometimes it is worth taking the time ahead penalty, but not always. Okay, let's go with widespread. And we've nearly finished that doctrine there. Okay, anything else here in the radar? We can't do any more stuff here, unfortunately. Hmm. I could just drop them at some point. Because they're so close. Sometimes it's better if you've just got so much territory and tiles. Like, just sometimes getting bodies on the front line can be better. We could potentially increase that. Or is there, like, one of these that has a bit more... So, which division do I like the look of? So maybe go with like that, 15 or 20, like th or maybe like 30 infantry. You can control a bunch of divisions in this mod, it's kind of crazy. We've basically spent a good chunk of our army experience, so we can't customize our divisions too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's chipped away 150k, so we've still got 450k. We do have a decent size pop. But once things kick off, we can look to mobilize more, I think. Okay, trade-wise, not too bad. So we got 19 submarines. That's more than what I thought. I thought I had about 10. It's actually a bit more. And they're not like tier 1 or 2. Eventually, hopefully, they can be like tier 4. Okay, still making plans and preparations. Building up. Everything seems a little bit docile on the border for now. Like, what are our tanks actually using? Like, what are... Oh, okay, T-72s chassis. A nice mixture there of Polish and Lithuanian equipment by the look of it. As we hit into August 2020, another Independence Day. Brilliant. Okay, we do have some more military factories in the far west of the country. Because I don't think they're seriously ever going to be under threat. Let's make sure we go with convoy raiding down here in the Black Sea and in the Azov Sea. Got those offensive plans just in case. And now we've completed that entire doctrine. Okay, nothing else we can do here to suspend that political power. Oh, it's probably been some time since we've gone back on the international arms market. We'll look to go back there again. Okay, we've completed this side of the tech tree. We can modernize the Odessa port. That's probably not a bad idea. As we're getting most of our submarines constructed down there. So, we've nearly got 200 divisions. Nice. We have 180 in active service. Which is roughly what I wanted. I think once the full-scale invasion happens, I wanted somewhere between 150 to 200. Just to defend all these tiles. There's probably that many tiles. But it's going to be interesting to see how we perform against the proper Federation troops. <laughs> Biden <laughs> has been elected. Nice. Good for him. He just likes ice cream. Licking ice cream. <laughs> 
Okay. Um... Oh, okay, we can get some Gen 4 carrier craft here. Okay, so unfortunately our submarine 3 has stopped up. It's just because of the steel. We haven't been able to import or some. Things might have changed now. Because I'm still learning this mod at the end of the day. I feel like there was a time where we like deliberately couldn't recruit. Maybe if I kind of rejig this a bit, it might give us access to steel. Hang on. So there's no, so can I, uh, like, will Poland or someone, like, give me any? Because, like, for the last couple of times we've tried to go in here, we've had no factories available. But I don't know what's... Maybe you have to stop those military factories being recruited. Constructed. Because um, steel is just not having it. We can't seem to build our own steel factories either. Or processing plants. Because at the moment we're not increasing our navy capacity. Okay. December now. Oh god, it's January. <laughs> we got public unrest <laughs> happening. Oh no. Unheard scenes took place in Washington DC today. What were they trying to accomplish? Okay. Crisis in Eastern Europe. So January 1st, 2021. We're going to go with High Court Anti-Corruption. We want to try and weed out the Soviet hangover where we can. Yeah, so our equipment and logistics of vehicles and stuff could be a bit better. Although we have a bunch of divisions on the front line, only 45% of the equipment is like properly filled. But from what I've found is you're better off to have a unit that's not properly full equipped than not have a unit on the front line at all. You're better off having some resistance on a tile than none. But that short fall, in theory, should be able to be made up once the Western powers start flooding vehicles. Get the Aussies to bring in the Bushmasters, various IVFs and tanks. Get the Abrams, get the Leopards. And whatever the French send. <laughs> Okay, let's continue to flood more over where we can. But so far, pretty solid mil military commanders ready. March 21. We've gone down to 430k manpower. Our stability is 100%, which is nice. War support 47. We're not having like any fuel issues. <laughs> it's because I guess we don't really have that many moving around. Let's once again prepare for more border skirmishes. But we're not going to know that we've done enough until <laughs> stuff kicks off. We've re-westernized our officer corps, which is nice. So they should perform better. Moving away from the Soviet doctrine. Okay, that's now being complete. Um, let's go with rocket artillery there. Oh, nice. Those military factories we built are now done. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else we can go down here. Oh, no, maybe getting more naval stuff. Okay. Still trying to move more units to the front line where we can. May 21. Still keeping a watchful eye on the border. 
I suppose... Oh! No, they're justifying against us. Oh no, it's about to happen. No! It's like a year early. Oh no. That's not good. I did see them like... Go on the border. A little bit earlier. Oh no, here we go. It's about to kick off, I think. Have we done enough? Yikes. So, it's probably 60, 90 days or so. Okay, so we're going to drop all these divisions. Because it's such a long border we're going to have to deal with. And... A lot of them are so close to nearly being finished anyway. Okay, so... Let's now stop recruiting units at all. We don't need to. We need every single spare equipment to basically go to fulfilling the entire units so where do we begin we've managed to drop another 120 so we've probably got oh, 300 divisions or so quite a significant amount so let's make sure that every single army is fully equipped with 72 units so Zeluzhny can have the main Ruslan can have the second Komuchuk. And we'll just chuck it on there because it's just easier to drag those units that have recently been deployed. Let's get some tank divisions. Oh no, so we've been RNG'd here. We're not going to have another year or so to prepare. Yikes. I wonder what caused that. Maybe they felt more secure in their position now that they can move over from Kharkiv, so let's go just get rid of some of these let's go with how many exactly about that and then we'll move you to Burunov and we'll start moving on the border so, where's the best place to defend? Well, obviously, looking at the topography of Ukraine, we can basically, worst case scenario, flee back over the Dnipro. And use the river as a defensive barrier, but ideally we want to try and hold as much of our territory as long as we can. Which is easier said than done. Okay, let's move south and then grab that. Cool. So we have 298, 115 infantry, 35 rocket, 29 IVF, the rest being tanks. Okay, so let's draw these front lines where we can. And set up some defensive perimeter. So essentially the first three are going to be our best units. So I think trying to hold these tiles and territory down in the south if we can tr sort of hold them from actually pushing from Crimea the better so do we go with the defensive line there because they might amphibiously invade potentially all right let's give Zoluzhny the command of oh maybe the north or do I put him am I tr I'm trying to think Should, uh, do I protect because they can come from are they gonna have more supply from their core territory rather than the oblasts there that are technically their puppets. I think there might be a bigger push in the north and they could snipe my capital. So we'll, we'll send Zeluzhny north and we'll chuck another one here. So we'll try and commit the bulk of the Ukrainian forces on this eastern side. We also need to uh, reallocate our air force. I guess we go with close air support. We do have 200 fighters now, so let's remove this. Oh my god. Okay, that's a bit better. And then we'll try and hold in the south there. I just don't know how strong they're going to push. If we can hold them on those key choke points, that would be ideal. Okay, I think that's a bit better. Well, we're just sort of waiting for the inevitable, I suppose. 300 divisions. We probably can go with some traits. Zeluzhny is a five-star general now. 
If we survive, he could be our next president. Uh, Kamachuk is going to be focusing on the south here. I'm trying to think, like, am I better off to actually, you know what, unassign some of these and then draw a front line on those points? Because we kind of don't want them just to send... Hang on. I, I think I've got a better idea. So, we will go with, like, 20. There we go. And we can draw a front line there. And mm, I guess we can situate you here on this choke point. And then maybe sit some down here. Alright. The military build-up is now... <laughs> oh no. Will and truly happening. Okay, so they are moving into the Oblasts there. They do have some troops on the Belarus border. I wonder if they're going to start paratrooping. Potentially as well. We're going to have to keep a watchful eye on... Bloody Hostimal. Uh, let's try and get some more anti-tank stuff if we can. No, I can't. Okay, so here are our logistics. Hopefully it's enough. We've got no divisions in active training. So they're not terrible. But they could be more <laughs> desirable. Yikes. So maybe this is probably our best regiment. If we can start flooding them in, that'd be better. Uh, let's go with that. Oh, nice. We've finally finished the research of the end law. So we can produce our own in-house. Let's go with support equipment, maybe. Or actually, no. Let's go with a better BTR. Oh, we got 36k there. 36k. <laughs> 36 units, rather. We're still getting military aid from various countries. Lithuania just gave us some more there. Alright. Maybe try and stretch that a bit, just in case more amphibious attacks go. Now that we've got them on the choke point there, let's just try and spread that out. Oh, yeah, there's Snake Island. <laughs> July now, 22. Hungary is providing us with heavy armaments. Nice of them. All right. Not enough command power. There's nothing we can just sort of sit here. Oh, I do want to try and, when I attack, be aggressive. The Pandora Papers. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go with advanced artillery. They are still justifying against us. Can I see when it's going to happen? I'd love to know. Oh! They have recognized the People's Republics. So, uh, I could maybe drop them. Just to get another 30 or so more. Nope! The fight is here. Here we go. The moment you've been waiting for. Slav Ukraini! It's begun. August 21. So, a full year earlier. Uh oh. We're now at war. So we have 290 divisions. Let's drop another 30. Because I just don't know how long... I just, I just don't know how strong this push is going to be. Uh, okay, so they're starting to push over here. We're holding them on the... Crimean choke point. They haven't pushed here, though. Wait, you can't just go from there? What? So they have upwards of 150 to 260. The main federation force. Okay, so... 
They don't seem to be moving through Belarus territory, so that's good for me. But here we go. The fight is here. We're holding in the south. Not so much in the center here. Oh, okay, so now we are getting pushed back a bit here. Um, we actually seem to have air support, which is interesting. Air supremacy. Even though we haven't got that many planes. Okay, now it's starting to change. We've got another 30 divisions there in Kiev. But... Oh, we're not doing so good in the south. We've lost 44k. They've lost 31. Yikes. But we just need to basically hold, bide our time. The longer we can survive, the more time it's going to give us to wait for more Western equipment and material. Well, unfortunately, on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching episode 3. Stay tuned for episode 4 coming out the exact same time tomorrow where we're going to continue this war. Thanks for watching. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I'm sorry I've left it on a cliffhanger. I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. <laughs>